Hello everybody. Uh, in this video, we're going to start a new topic in Aspen Plus, and it's one of the uh, most commonly used uh, methods and units uh, in, in chemical processes in general, um, which is the gas liquid separation. Um, and by the gas liquid separation, we mean the the unit operations that include um, uh, separation um, of c components um, from from the same phase or from different phases. Um, and this separation includes uh, gas and liquid phases, and that's why it's called gas-liquid separation. This includes um, distillation, and this is the most famous application of the gas-liquid separations. Um, and this includes uh, ad absorption, includes stripping, and other um, operations. But absorp ab absorption is the most famous one of them. Um, and um, we're going to start uh, this video with uh, introduction to the uh, units that we have in Aspen Plus that we can use for the gas-liquid separation processes. Um, and the next video, we're going to start with the um, distillation. Uh, we'll see like four, three or four videos uh, going through distillation columns. Um, so uh, we're going to start with... Uh, what we call the shortcut methods. And, and before we, we start, um, there are many details that I, uh, I'm not going to go uh, into uh, because I have already discussed them in details in the Microsoft Excel series. Uh, I'm going to put um, a link to the series in the video description so that you can go and watch the videos in case you need to refresh your information or you want to uh, remember something that you do not remember well. So it's, it's going to be available. I'm not going to re-discuss these uh, details because um, I, I don't want to make the videos long. Uh, the videos include um, all the information starting from the um, demonstration of the components of the distillation columns, uh, the um, basic calculations, the types of equations that we use, and, and everything. So uh, it's going to be very detailed for anyone who is interested. So. Um, from the uh, or, or the units that we have in Aspen Plus can be classified into two categories, the uh, categories that do shortcut calculations. And it's going to similar to what we mentioned before in um, the valves and in the um, heat exchangers. We did shortcut calculations and we saw the rigorous calculations. So we have both uh, options. And, and of course, based on our knowledge with the two methods, the shortcut will require a small number of inputs, <coughs> and it's going to give us a small number of outputs. Um, it's going to be very basic, um, and it's going to go like the, the um, um, shortcut distillation uh, method that we know, which is the McKeefe-Thiele diagram. Um, so it's, it's going to give us the basic information about the reflux ratio, about the um, number of stages, the feed location, and uh, th this is mostly the information that we're going to get, and um, it's not going to provide any information about the internals of the column, um, either the pressure profile, the temperature profile, the composition profile, none of this will be um, will be provided. When we go to the second uh, method, which is the rigorous method, it um, it goes into the what we call the tray to tray calculations, which was discussed in the Microsoft Excel series as well. The tray to tray, -to -tray calculations include uh, the calculations of or doing the or solving the equations of mass balance, heat balance. Uh, equilibrium uh, relations and the summation of X and summation of Y, which which we call the mesh material equilibrium summations and heat equations uh, simultaneously for each stage. And uh, by this, you can go from tray to tray until you reach the uh, top product and the bottom product. Um, and uh, the specifications we need for such method are more than the specifications we need for the uh, shortcut method. We have to provide the detailed information about the composition, the flow and the, of the feed stream, the number of stages, the separation requirements, um, which by this we mean uh, what is the composition of the top product or uh, the, the, uh, how much of the feed in the top product is going to go there and it's not going to go uh, at the top and the bottom. Um, and it's going to provide the feed stages and the column pressure profile. So th these are a lot of information that we need to profile compared to what uh, to provide compared to what we pro needed to pro provide in the shortcut method. And at, at, at this point, there is something that I like to stress a lot on. Um, before 
developing the computers and inventing this uh, this uh, softwares um, people used to do the calculations manually and i just want you to imagine if you have a, um, a column of 20 trays and each tray of them um, you have to do calculations for mass energy equilibrium um, calculations and to solve them simultaneously make sure that the sum of x equals 1 and sum of y equals 1 and this includes a lot of trials and the thermodynamic calculations are very very tough um, and you have to do all these calculations for by, by iterative solution um, and you can imagine how many uh, variables you have and you do this for 20 trays and you have to do iterations on the whole column so it's a very 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 time consuming process it can take weeks to get the uh, the column designed well and that's why uh, people would would uh, before inventing this fancy software would go for uh, uh, the design based on their experience so they know that similar separations were done using this number of stages and this reflux ratio so they, they will go for it or they would over design the column which means that they know it's gonna need around 20 trays so let's make it 30 let's make it 25 so they over design it so they make it more than what they need and of course it costs money but this is because they cannot do the calculations manually um, and and imagine doing these calculations and uh, you did a mistake while going through all these steps and this will ruin everything so um, I'm, I'm saying all these details because I want you or, or the user to appreciate that software that you are using uh, you're, you're doing all these tedious calculations uh, by click of a mouse. You just give your information uh, or, or provide the software with the information in a very user-friendly interface. You just click run and it runs. And you change any of the inputs and click run and it runs. So it's, it's not that easy. I, I, I just want you to imagine how hard and how difficult it is. Um, and that's why you would imagine something like the McCarthy diagram. It was a breakthrough at that time. You imagine there are no computers. and someone came with the idea of doing the graphical solution and solving all these equations uh, of course with, with some assumptions but you are solving the equations and getting a solution which might not be very accurate but it's very close to what you want to, to go for um, and you are doing this in a few minutes it can take like 10-15 minutes by drawing some lines and then you know how many stages that you have so it it, it, it it was like a, a genius idea at that at that time and still till today the idea of having graphical solution is very very useful for me myself I feel that I, I cannot get the feeling of the distillation column and understanding of the effect of the parameters on the behavior of the column uh, without the the, the, uh, the the image of the McCarthy diagram in my head, so I can I can simply imagine how the reflex ratio will change, then the top section line will change, and this will change the number of stages, how the the flow rates will affect everything. So it's it's kind of very very uh, uh, genius idea to go for this graphical solution. So again, I'm I'm, I'm going into this like uh, story just to make you aware of. The, the amount of calculations that are being done in uh, in this software so please appreciate that it's 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 not just uh, something that you click on it's doing a lot um, so uh, now let's go for the uh, modules that we have in Aspen plus so we can uh, kind of classify the modules that we have into two categories the shortcut categories and the uh, rigorous category. For the shortcut category we have the DSTWU which is the Win Underwood Gilliland method and this is the, the names of the three uh, scientists who developed this shortcut method. By the way McKib Thiele is not the only shortcut method that is used to do the um, or to to, uh, to to get the number of stages or to solve the distillation column. There are many methods, and and um, if if you check the textbook, there there is a like a, a tree for the the shortcut methods um, that you can uh, you can see some shortcuts are are, are more uh, suitable for uh, for ideal systems. Some for are, are suitable for non-ideal systems. So it depends on the the shortcut method. But the one that we we use in Aspen Plus here is the DSTWU. Um, and um, 
you have to provide the light and the heavy key and we will we will go uh, into kind of small or uh, I mean into details about the light and heavy keys in few slides um, and uh, you have to define the uh, number of stages uh, or, or it can calculate the number of uh, theoretical stages the minimum reflex ratio the feeding stage the duty so it, it kind of gives some useful information um, so and it, it there is one nice thing about it it can you can get uh, a plot uh, for the reflux ratio against the number of stages and this this is this is very very nice we will do this in the next video uh, the uh, so, so based on the information that we provide and the information that we get out of this unit it's clear that this is a design mode uh, unit so you provide your your desired outputs and it gives you the specifications of the column the list l uh, uh, unit is is the other way it's in the rating mode so you provide the design that you have and it will tell you how much uh, output that you're going to get the the uh, top and bottom products uh, uh, compositions and it uh, it can give some information about the behavior of the column the last one is the SCF rec, uh, which is the uh, the third uh, shortcut method uh, block, and it uh, it's used for uh, uh, crude units or, or for for kind of more complex distillation columns. So you have for, for, from the the icon you can see there is like some side products coming out of here, and and the very famous example that this unit is uh, more suitable for is the distillation of crude oil. Um, for those who do not know how crude oil distillation goes, crude oil comes as a bunch of different um, components uh, from from the light gases like the buta gas and and all these. Uh, uh, the beta gas and the the, the other uh, methane ethane propane and all these gases and then going to the the jet fuel uh, you would go for the then the next uh, you would, you would go uh, for the uh, the gasoline um, and then the kerosene and all all the different uh, components uh, and cuts of the uh, of the crude oil um, and it goes down to the solids like the waxes and the asphalt so you have a lot of side products coming out of this column because you are getting a lot of um, outputs based on the boiling points or the, the temperature of, of the area stage. So this is kind of suitable for this uh, type of column. Um, for, for the vacuum crude units, it's uh, because we are at these columns you are operating at very high temperature because you need to melt the waxes so you can separate it by distillation. So this high temperature can crack other components that are, are lighter than that so you can break it into smaller molecules to prevent that we can operate under vacuum so that you can evaporate the um, like the high molecular weight liquids at lower temperature so this is what it's what's the vacuum crude unit uh, about um, so uh, anyway so these are some information about it but this is the the uh, the cases that we use this unit for. Um, for the rigorous calculation mod modules, we have um, like four, like what we see here. For the first is the multifrac, which is, uh, as it's clear from the icon, it's uh, the icon is not very clear though, but it, it, it shows a column here that has a side product going to another column and then coming back as like the bottom stream. Uh, so this is used for columns that um, have connected uh, columns to them. So the, the very famous example is the land double column, which is two distillation columns that are, um, um, are fixed uh, one on the top of the other. And the reboiler of the top column is the condenser of the bottom column. And it's used for air separation, for separating oxygen from nitrogen. It's a very, very famous column. So uh, in this case, the two columns are dependent on each other. So that's why we um, we can use this column for this case. The petrofrac is exactly what we mentioned in the previous slide about the SCF rec uh, or uh, SC frac. Uh, so it's it's the same, but this is the rigorous uh, mode unit. Um, so uh, again, some information we can go through them if you're interested. And then we have the red frac, and this is the uh, like the. You, this is our first bit. This is when we start by distillation. We first think about this. If we have special cases like the um, 
uh, multi-frack or vitro-frack cases, then we will go for them. But first, we will go for uh, rat track. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about the rat track in details in the next slide. Um, finally, you have the extract. This is uh, used to simulate the liquid-liquid extractor. So this is not a gas-liquid separation uh, module, but it's in the same place or in the same ribbon. So uh, that's why it's put in the same, um, in the same list. This is not a gas-liquid separation, it's a liquid-liquid separation. Um, and we will, we will discuss this in the next videos, inshallah. So uh, going back to the red track, so the red track can accept multiple feeds and can have multiple uh, products, top and bottom, and um, side products. You can have optional energy stream if you have like cooling coil or uh, heating coil or something like this. You have energy streams. Um, and it can handle liquid and aqueous streams. Um, so, so it's kind of flexible unit and it can use for simple distillation for absorption, ab absorption with reboiler. This is stripping, I'm sorry, this is a mistake, it's not splitting, it's stripping, it's stripping with reboiler. It can be used for extractive and azeotropic distillation, even for reactive distillation. You can define a reaction uh, that takes place inside the distillation column. So it's kind of flexible unit that has a lot of options that will cover like, a very wide range of distillation columns. Um, so this is the uh, again the our first bit or the first uh, thing that we will think of when we go for rigorous distillation. Um, the uh, example that we're gonna solve in the next video, inshallah, is the uh, separation of styrene and ethyl benzene. Um, we have we know the temperature of the feed, we know the flow rate, and we know the composition, which is down here. We have ethyl benzene, styrene, and heptadecane, which is an impurity with very low composition or concentration. And we have the goals to achieve 99.2% of ethyl benzene to, uh, to, to recovery in the top product and 2.5 of the. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Anyways, we'll go we'll go through these details in the next video. Um, and we know the pressure details and the reflux rate. So we have we have a lot of information. So this is what we're going to do in the next video, inshallah. But first, before going back to or going to or, or finishing the video, I need to talk about the heavy and light keys, which I just mentioned in uh, my previous slide. So um, to understand the uh, the concept of the heavy and light keys, let's see there. Say that we have this column. And this column has a feed that has seven components, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, and they are uh, sorted by the boiling point. So this has the minimum boiling point. It's a most volatile component. And G is the maximum boiling point. It's the least volatile component. And they are fed to the distillation column. So by, by just looking at this, uh, we used to uh, see the distillation columns with A and B. And we know that A goes up and B goes down. So it's, it's kind of easy thing. But in, in such a case, we have um, a big list of, of components. and the column can separate by by different uh, by different uh, ways. You can separate A in the top and B C D E F G in the bottom. You can do the opposite. You can separate from the middle. So y you have to define where you need the separation to take place. And by doing this, we define um, the heavy keys to make like e life easier. So let's say I want to do the separation so that these three components go up and these four components go down. Uh, so this is what I want to achieve. So what I'm saying by the light and heavy key is that I'm assuming that these two uh, components in red um, are like the, the key components, not like they are the key components, which means that I'm considering the separation to be taking place between C and D only. And I know from the boiling points that C, uh, when it goes in the top product, then A and B would be there before C because they're more volatile than C. And if D goes down in the bottom product, then E, F, and G will go there before D because they are um, less volatile than um, uh, than D. So uh, this this is the idea of the light and the heavy keys. Um, so by doing this, I am considering my system to be a binary system, uh, separating C and D. And uh, by doing this, I'm, I'm I'm making my life easier. I'm defining where the separation should take place. Um, and this will dictate the, the uh, temperature uh, of the separation, the number of the stages, the feed location, and many other uh, things, uh, and, and the reflux station, many other, many other things. So uh, 
by I'm gonna call C the light key and D the heavy key. The definition might be kind of confusing. That's why I left the definition till the end. So C is the light key, which is the most volatile component in the top product. Uh, I mean the least. Um, I think uh, I think I did a mistake. This is the least volatile, and this is the most. I'm sorry for this mistake. Oops. So um, the heavy key is the most volatile component um, in the uh, top product, and the C or the light key is the least volatile component. In, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, D is the uh, least volatile component in the bottom product, and C is the most is the least. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's kind of confusing. I know, um, and and C is the light key, which is the least volatile component in the top product. So this is the least volatile here, and this is the most volatile here. So this is this is how uh, things work. Of course, it's it, it it could be a disaster if you flip this. So if you consider C the heavy key and D is the light key, you are you are asking the column to do what is against everything. So the thermodynamics and the uh, and the equilibrium relations and everything. So uh, it's important to keep in mind which is the light key and which is the heavy key, so that you can choose them right. So this is all for this video, and I'll see you in the next video, inshallah. Goodbye.